The character of the Celestial Toymaker is known for being one of the Doctor's greatest enemies. For a character that has only made one appearance in the TV series, it's quite impressive he has such a high reputation in Doctor Who fandom. Not to mention that the one story he does appear in is largely missing from the BBC's archive. All that remains is episode 4, the concluding episode of the story. So if the Toymaker is loved so much, why hasn't he returned? Well, he very nearly did. With the rumours that the Toymaker will be making an appearance yet again on our television screens in the 60th anniversary year, I felt it would be a good time to reflect on this almost reappearance. This is the story of how the Nightmare Fair never came to town. First of all, who is the Celestial Toymaker? The Toymaker is essentially a god, a being who is bored of eternal life and only wishes to play games. Unfortunately, if you play against the Toymaker, you're not guaranteed a fair game, since he is a notorious loser. He wants to see you lose not only the game, but also your life. He made his first appearance in the 1966 story, The Celestial Toymaker, and then silence. But in the 1980s, he was set to make a return and face off against the Sixth Doctor, played by Colin Baker. The Doctor and Perry arrive at Blackpool for a much needed vacation, but the TARDIS team can't catch a break when they discover that people are going missing. The last place they were sighted was at a fun fair. On the surface, the amusement park is packed with the ordinary thrills of roller coasters and dark rides, but hidden in the shadows is a real threat. An old foe of the Doctor's, the Celestial Toymaker, is developing a video game deep within the amusement park, which is about to be released across the world. The video game pits a player against monsters which can come to life and kill you in the real world. The toy maker makes the doctor test the game. If he loses the game, the earth will be destroyed. So, how can you watch this story? Well, you can't. The production of season 22, Colin Baker's first full season as the sixth doctor is well underway. But pre-production of season 23 is also starting up. The first story of that season was to be the story which would later become The Nightmare Fair. On the 24th of September, a previous producer of Doctor Who, Graham Williams, was commissioned to write a storyline for the first episode of season 23. This story was initially known as Arcade. It would continue the two-part 45-minute episode format season 22 had. The month previous, John Nathan Turner, the current producer, went with Colin Baker to Blackpool to open a new attraction called Space Invader. Seeing Colin in his full costume in a fairground setting sparked the idea of the story. By October, Eric Sayward, the script editor, had made contact with the promotions and entertainment manager of Blackpool Pleasure Beach to see if there was any available filming windows for the story. Easter and Spring Bank Holidays were mentioned as possible dates due to smaller crowds. The dates were eventually locked in to be Monday the 20th of May to Friday the 24th of May 1985. By November, the BBC Copyright Department began negotiations to use the character of the Celestial Toymaker, which was under the copyright of Brian Hales, who wrote the original story. The story seemed to be full steam ahead, but by the beginning of the next year, it was clear that all was not well at the BBC. By February, rumours about Doctor Who being cancelled began to make their way through the halls of the BBC. John Nathan Turner was shocked at these rumours. He first heard from Robert Holmes, a prolific Doctor Who writer, who was commissioned to write a story later in season 23 known as Yellow Fever, which was a story featuring Autons, the Brigadier, and a visit to Singapore. Later on, John heard the rumour from Ian Levine, a Doctor Who fan and unofficial continuity expert. 
In Doctor Who magazine, John Nathan Turner said, I couldn't believe a fan and writer had their fingers on the pulse more than any of us in the front office. It wasn't the way the BBC did things at all. I dismissed the whole thing out of court. Arrogance, maybe, but I couldn't believe that such a major decision had been made without any form of discussion with the front office. Believing it to be a lie, John carried on as normal. He went to a convention in America and even showed the Nightmare Fair script to Colin Baker on the flight back home. But on the 25th of February, after John Nathan Turner returned from an American Doctor Who convention, he was called into the office of Jonathan Powell, the head of department. It was then he was told the show was cancelled. Later that day, Eric Saywood and John had to watch the playbacks from Revelation of the Daleks, which was set to air in the next month. Eric said to John, a man who usually will sing out with notes, said nothing. Eric said to Doctor Who magazine, He had never been so quiet or unopinionated. It took him quite a while to recover. The final line from Revelation of the Daleks was to be, All right, I'll take you to Blackpool. But in the final on-screen version, the episode ends on a freeze frame before saying Blackpool. Was this how Doctor Who was going to originally end? The Doctor promising to take Perry to an unknown location? The final ever shot of our beloved program. News of the cancellation hit the press, and the backlash was so severe, the BBC turned its cancellation into a rest. Bill Cotton, the managing director of BBC Television said, The Doctor is having a short rest and will return, improvised and revitalised, in autumn next year, only eight months later than originally planned. Now believing everything is back to normal, production continues. John contacts Blackpool Pleasure Beach again to push the dates back. At this point, he highlights that he wishes to concentrate on the following rides, Space Invader, Big Dipper and Goldmine. But by July, orders from above reduce the episode lengths from 45 minutes each to only 25 minutes each. Alongside that, they also reduce the amount of episodes to 14 instead of the regular 24 to 26. These dramatic changes to the format meant that all work already started on season 23 had to be rethought. It meant a whole new approach and the original season 23 had to be abandoned. The Nightmare Fair was ultimately shelved, never to be filmed. But as all things Doctor Who, we can never let anything be forgotten. Since the original script survives, the story lives on in a few different forms. In 1989, Graham Williams took up the task of turning his script of The Nightmare Fair into a novelisation. This was to be the first in a series of Target's Missing Episodes range. It was also the first ever full-length novel which was not a story told on television. As stated earlier, Revelation of the Daleks ended with the Doctor telling Perry that they're going to Blackpool. But in the novel, this is changed. The TARDIS is drawn into a nexus of the primeval cauldron of space-time itself. Whatever that means. This book was followed up with two more missing episode entries. The Ultimate Evil in 1989 and Mission to Magnus in 1990. With the success of these novels, Target Slash Version Publishing began to create brand new stories and the rest is history. But being Doctor Who fans, we're never content with just one version of a story. Big Finish, a company which creates Doctor Who audio dramas, published an adaptation of The Nightmare Fair in 2009. It featured Colin Baker and Nicola Bryant returning to their television roles. David Richardson, the producer for the Lost Stories range, always wanted to do adaptations of the Lost Season 23 for Big Finish. He had discussed the idea with Nicholas Briggs and Jason Haig Ellery, and they became quite keen on the idea. John Ainsworth adapted the story for audio and also directed it, after getting permission from Graham Williams' family. Many names of rides and locations were changed to avoid licensing problems, such as Space Mountain being renamed to Galactic Adventure, due to the original title was copyrighted by Disney. By the point of recording, Michael Goff had retired from acting, so a new actor had to be found to play the toy maker. David Richardson 
explained that they weren't looking for a big name because they might overplay the part, since Goff's performance is very understated. He decided to think back on great villain actors in Doctor Who, and they eventually asked David Bailey, who played Dask in The Robots of Death, if he would be interested in playing the toy maker. They requested that he didn't do an impersonation, but they would give him notes to keep him in line with the character. If you want to listen to The Nightmare Fair, you can listen to it for free on Spotify. This is not an ad, just a recommendation if you want to listen to it. There has also been a couple of fan attempts of resurrecting the story. In 2003, six years before Big Finish's adaptation, a fan-made audio drama was made by Argolis Productions. They used the TV script and the novel as a base for their adaptation. The story was two episodes on one CD. All proceeds went to the charity Sense, which is an organisation in the UK which supports people who are deafblind or have a hearing or vision impairment. The charity was chosen by Anthony Reid, a previous script editor of Doctor Who, to pay tribute to Graham Williams, who had passed by the making of this production. In order to avoid copyright, they didn't include the name Doctor Who on the cover, but instead referred to the show as Series X. Another fan attempt that exists is in Ian Levine's private collection. It is a Telesnap-style reconstruction of the Nightmare Fair. It uses audio from the Big Finish adaptation, and its visuals are a mixture of CGI backgrounds and screenshots of actors. Unfortunately, Ian has decided for copyright reasons not to release it to the public. Ian has also made a whole season 23 season of these Telesnap style reconstructions. He believes the series was to be the following stories. The Nightmare Fair, The Ultimate Evil, Mission to Magnus, Yellow Fever, The Hollows of Time, and Gallifrey. Since production on season 23 ended so early, it's hard to say if the season would have ended up like this. Some of the above stories, such as Yellow Fever and Gallifrey, have not received big finished adaptations, due to the fact neither ever reached script stage. So Ian had gone along and recorded his own audios based on ideas from the original concepts. How accurate these are to the original is debatable. Colin Baker does not appear in these adaptations, but Nicola Bryant does. You can see a small glimpse of some of these productions on a YouTube video trailer that was uploaded a few years ago. The Nightmare Fair is a story lost to time. A story that's fate was never meant to be. I think with many of these lost stories, it's hard to get a full judgement on the end product. From script to screen, many additions and reductions are made. Audio drama and television are two very different beasts. When adapting for audio, all action sequences had to be changed, so we're missing a vital part of the story there alone. It's tough to say if the story would have been a lost classic, or a curious return of a 60s villain. I feel like the toy maker is an interesting character, but I haven't seen a story where I feel like he's been used to his full potential, in order for me to say yes, I love this character. But with rumours of the character returning in the 60th anniversary, who knows? Maybe the next story will cement the character as a new favourite. We can only hope. Although The Nightmare Fair isn't a favourite of mine, I think it's an interesting piece of history, a curiosity, which is a similar theme throughout the Lost Stories range for me. What do you think of The Nightmare Fair? Let me know in the comments below.